realize that you are going to be exceptional. If you go back to Pennsylvania or Indiana or Dallas, at what point did you kind of have a feeling that things were going to happen? When I was about 12 years old. Um, and I remember asking my dad to, um, I wanted new basketball shoes because I was a basketball junkie back then. He's like, well, your shoes work. If you want a new <laughs> pair of tennis shoes, you have to go out there and get a job. And I'm like, Dad, I'm, I'm 12 years old. And it just so happens he was playing poker with his buddies. And one of his buddies was like, well, I got a job for you. I've got these garbage bags that we distribute. You can sell them door to door. I'm like, OK. And it was when I was selling them and realizing that I like to sell and that I could sell and that I recognized that selling was, was about providing a service and creating value for people that I knew that I, I would, I literally back then, I knew that I could always succeed. Um, I mean, I remember I was 16, I think, when I, I started a stamp company and started going to, to stamp shows and trade shows and just working a little bit harder than other people and, and trading up from one stamp to the next. I remember one time I started with a quarter and bought a stamp and left with $50, thinking, hey, if I could do this, I could do anything. And, and it's not that everything worked. I failed a lot, but I never, ever felt like I, I wouldn't be able to work hard enough to succeed. Well, you, you have an extreme passion for the Mavs. Even the casual viewer can see how passionate you are. Do you, do you think that that passion transcends into the way you approach business? Yeah, I think it's the other way around. I think it was, it was the, the passion I've always had for business and being an entrepreneur that, tran that transfers into the Mavs, I, I've always been passionate. Some people thought, you know, it's, a, it's more OCD than anything else, which I think is a, a great trait for an entrepreneur. Um, when I, you know, I mentioned the stamp business, I would stay up till 3, 4 in the morning, even though I had to get up and go to school, and read Lynn Stamp News and Scott Stamp Journals and have them all memorized and, and use that to give myself an edge. Um, even when I was in college, um, I'd be in, in the library reading business books and just looking for business biographies and just reading all I could about business. Um, when I had micro solutions and, you know, I started with no money, you know, I I'd pull all-nighters in, in front of borrowed computers teaching myself software and, and how to program. Um, it, it's just, I've always just really enjoyed just the, the competition of business. I think, you know, in, in the sports business, I'll talk to, to our players, <clears throat> and it'll be like, well, you guys compete for 48 minutes, and you practice a couple hours, and you work on your game independently a couple hours. But the ultimate sport is business because you have to compete with everybody, and you have to do a 24 by 7 by 365 days a year forever, and there's always somebody out there trying to kick your butt. There's always somebody who looks at your business and says, I can do that better. I have a better idea. And you're, you have to compete with that person. And all the while, you have to make your customers happy, your employees happy. It, it's, it's the competitive side of me that, and any entrepreneur that I think that, that has to drive you. And, and I think that carries over into the Mavericks. I, I want to win, and, and I want to compete. Well, when you started Microsolutions, it was a small company. Yep. Um, what advice would you give small business owners? Um, love what you do. I think too many people think they have to find the one idea. And there's nothing wrong with failing. You know, you, I, I've told a lot of people, it doesn't matter how many times you fail. If, if you get it right, you're an overnight success. All you got to do is get it right one time, and you're that overnight success. Um, you know, I sold powder milk, and that was a disaster. I had a, my senior year project at Indiana was opening up a bar that got closed because of a wet t-shirt contest with a 16-year-old. That was a disaster. That was good because it kept me out of the bar business. Um, I got fired from my first job in the software business because I wanted to close a deal instead of going out and closing a sale. I mean, instead of coming in and sweeping the floor, you know, and, and so it, it didn't matter how many times I failed. I just kept on going and going and going. And entrepreneurs need to realize that sometimes it's not the idea. You know, it's not being, it's not who you know. It's not how much money you have access to. It, it's really finding something that you, you really love to do. I had no idea I loved computers and technology, none. I mean, I took one class in Indiana in computers, and I cheated to get through it. It was Fortran. And, and 
Then I bought a, a little PC, a 994A from Texas Instruments for $99. Started teaching myself to program and found, you know, four hours later, five hours later, I, was, I would look up and I'd been working this entire time and I loved it. And so that was the difference. When I finally, f I failed a lot of times and I really, I, I didn't know where I'd find my success. And then all of a sudden I started playing with PCs and technology and it just clicked. You know, I, uh, I've often wondered. In what order of importance would you put uh, when you look at technical understanding, instinct, creativity, or believing that you can do something, what, what is most important? I think the most important is knowing your strengths and weaknesses and knowing what you enjoy doing. You know, if, if you look at it as a job, you've already lost. It, it's not going to be your passion, and you're going to count the hours. If, if you look at it as, as something you love to do, um, and then you know what your strengths are, then you can leverage those strengths in, in your business and in helping others. And once you recognize your weaknesses, then you can work with people that complement you. I mean, every one of my businesses, I've had a partner who's very anal. <laughs> Martin Woodall, Todd Wagner, I mean, incredibly anal people, perfectionists, because I'm a slob. You know, I'm, I'm a big picture. Think about what's around the corner. How's technology going to change things? How can I change, you know, this industry? And, you know, making sure that there's somebody there to, make, to dot the I's, cross the T's, and keep me in the baselines. Um, and, you know, recognizing my weaknesses is just as important as recognizing my strengths and my core competencies and, and you know, having a passion to, to do them.